Hello and welcome to our Boson XM Max product demonstration video. I'm John Oden on the development team here at Boson Software. In this video demo, we're going to take a look at the Boson XM Max exam simulation for the Cisco T Shoot 300. 135 certification exam. Now this exam is a departure from other Cisco certification exams in that a majority of your time will be spent examining network topologies and device configurations as you work to solve problems. Many Cisco exams contain interactive items wherein you're required to interact with a small network topology, but this exam is different in that it focuses on your ability to examine a complex network, locate the source of a problem, and then determine what steps need to be taken to correct the problem. I'm going to launch the Boson exam environment, which is our content delivery platform, and then we'll load the simulation for the 300-135 exam into the Boson exam environment and see how it can help you prepare for the Cisco 300-135 certification exam. This Boson XM Max exam simulation product contains three separate practice exams, exam A, exam B, and exam C. Each of these practice exams simulates the experience you're likely to see when you take the 300-135 certification exam. You can go through each exam in either study mode or simulation mode. In simulation mode, you will have a timed exam experience. You'll be working against time limit, just like on the real exam. You will not know if you answered the question correctly or incorrectly. And all of this is so that you'll have a very similar experience to what you would have when you go to the testing center. You can also take each exam in study mode. And in study mode, you will know whether you answered the question correctly or incorrectly immediately. And you'll also be able to see a detailed explanation that will help you understand why the right answer is right and why the incorrect answers are incorrect, as well as some references that will direct you to other resources to deepen your understanding of the topic. So let's go ahead and launch exam A in study mode and take a look at some of the components of the practice exam itself. Like most Cisco certification exams, there'll be a variety of different types of questions that you may encounter as you work through the exam. And one of those types of questions is the basic multiple choice question like you see on the screen here. In this type of question, you're given a question or a problem statement, perhaps some supporting graphics or other information on the screen. Then you're given a series of choices and you are to choose the best one. In some cases, you will select a single answer as is the case with the question that I have on the screen. In other situations, you will be instructed to pick two choices or three choices, sometimes even four choices, and there'll be a note at the top of the screen to tell you how many choices you should make. I'm going to select the first choice, and since we're in study mode, I have access to the show answer feature, and if I click the show answer button down at the bottom of the screen, then I get an explanation. I also get a confirmation as to whether the choice that I made was correct or incorrect. In this case, it is a correct choice. Then you can see there's a very detailed explanation that will support why that choice is correct. And further down, we get some references that will direct us to some resources on the Cisco website so that we can go even further and deepen our understanding of this particular topic. And down below, you can see that we also note which section from the Cisco exam topic outline that this question belongs to. Another type of question that you could encounter on this exam is the simlet. And in this type of question, there is an interactive element. And you'll see that when I click the Launch Simulator button here on the screen. After I click the Launch Simulator button, a simulated network topology will appear. And I could examine that network topology. And then I can look down below, and there'll be a question or problem statement. And I could read that, and then based on what I need to successfully answer that question, I can go back and examine this topology. And I can click on the device that I'm interested in. For example, if I need to find out something about Router C, I can just click right on Router C in the topology diagram. And that will load the command console for Router C. And then from there, I can issue command line commands find out what I need to find out about Router C. If I need information about one of the other devices in the topology, I can go back and click the Show Topology button. That will take me back to the topology diagram. I could choose another device. Perhaps I need to 
examine the configuration also of router E. I can click on that. There's the command console for router E. I could issue various commands on router E and find out what I need from router E and so on. And after I've gathered all the information that I need from the devices in the topology, then I can select the choices below. And you can see that I'm told to select four choices. And I'm going to just select the first four, A, B, C, and D. And just like before, once I've made those choices, I can click the show answer button and the correct answers will be revealed. You can see in this case, I didn't make the correct choices. And I answered this question incorrectly. I'm told what the correct answers were both here and the highlights in yellow up above also reinforce that. And once again, just like before, we have a detailed explanation that gives us what we need to know about why those choices are the correct choices, further down some additional references, and once again, the category to which this question belongs in the Cisco exam topic outline. The third type of question that you could encounter on the 300-135 exam, and we provide a simulation of this type of question in our Boson XMAX 300-135 exam simulation product, which we're reviewing here, is the ticket, the trouble ticket. I'm going to click the launch simulator button to launch the ticket. And this type of question is really the heart of the T-shoot exam. If you've taken any other Cisco exam before, you no doubt have seen multiple choice questions. You've probably seen similar questions. But unless you've taken T-shoot, you have not seen the trouble ticket question. So we'll spend a little bit of time breaking it down and seeing what it's like. There are several components to the trouble ticket question type. And the first are some instructions that kind of give you an overview of how to navigate through the ticket structure. We'll go through those in quite a bit of detail here, as well as the different kinds of devices that you might expect to find in the topology, as well as some of the commands that you can use on the console of each device to isolate and determine what the problem is, as well as how you would solve it. So how do we work our way through solving the trouble ticket? Well, first let's take a look at some of the resources that we have available. If you look at the buttons down here below, you can see we have a variety of things that we could look at. Let me first show you that there are three network topology overlays. There's a layer two topology where we can look at our switching domains. We can find out information about the various VLANs and so forth. We could look at the IPv4 layer three topology overlay and learn more about our routing domains and the routing protocols that are deployed and on which devices and how the devices are connected to each other. We could also look at the IPv6 layer three topology overlay. And by using these topology overlays, we can get an idea of how the network is connected together, what are the various devices and what are their relationships to each other and we also have access to the consoles of these devices where we can issue a limited set of commands, things like various show commands and, and so forth. So I can click on a device in the topology and there's the device console for that particular device. This is router one. I could examine the running configuration of router one. I could look at the states of the various interfaces on router one and so on. I could do the same thing for routers two, three, and four, as well as the various switches in the topology. So those are the resources that I have. So now that you know your way around a bit, let's open up the ticket and see what we're faced with. I'm gonna click the ticket button, which is down on the bottom all the way over to the right. And when I do that, now the problem solving begins. You can see up at the top, there's a problem statement in this case, a network engineer has recently made several changes to the company's network and a trouble ticket has been opened reporting that PC1 is no longer able to ping an external server at IP address 210.98.76.54. So thus begins our troubleshooting process. In each ticket, you'll be faced with three questions or three phases, I should say, to each ticket. The first phase is to identify which device is the source of the problem. Is the problem on router one, router two, router three, router four, one of the switches? So we can make our choice there. And once we have indicated which device we believe is the source of the problem, then we can move on to the next phase of the ticket. 
And now we're asked, which technology on that device is the source of the problem? So we can make a choice there. We indicated that we believe the problem is on router one. Perhaps we believe there is a problem with the EIGRP routing domain configuration, so I could make that choice. And then I can move on to the final phase of the ticket. And based on the two selections that I've made prior, which device and what technology, now which of these actions should I take to solve the problem? Notice that it's important that you get started on the right track because if you choose the wrong device, then that will lead you to a different set of technologies that are configured on that device. And then based on the technology that you choose, you'll get a totally different set of possible solutions to solve the problem. So getting started down the right path, as you can see, is very important. So once you've made your choices, the first choice being which device is the source of the problem, then which technology on that device, and finally, what are you going to do? What step would you take to solve the problem? Once you've made those three selections, then that completes the ticket. Now on the live exam, you would simply click done and close out the ticket. But since this is a practice exam and we are in study mode, I could click done plus show explanation. And just as with the other types of questions that you've seen, this type of question also has a very detailed explanation that walks you through the problem, identifying which device, which technology, and then finally what action should you take to solve the problem, as well as references. Notice the color here of the ticket button has changed to red, indicating we have completed this ticket, so we can now close it out and move on to the next item. I should make a note here that if you've taken the prior version of the T-Shoot exam 642-832, you'll probably recall that all of the multiple choice questions came at the beginning of the exam. You answered a handful of multiple choice questions and then you moved on into the trouble ticket phase of the exam and you received 12 trouble tickets one right after the other. With 300-135, it is no longer that way and you could receive any type of question at any time. For example, you might see as your first question, a multiple choice question that could be followed by two trouble tickets, which could be followed by a couple of more multiple choice questions, which could then be followed by a simlet, and then more trouble tickets. So in the new version of T-Shoot 300-135, which is a part of the new CCNP track, it was released in July of 2014, the end of July 2014. All of the question types are mixed up. You might get them in any sequence as you work through the exam. So after you have worked through all of the questions in the exam, there are a couple of additional features of our BOSUN exam environment exam engine that you might be interested to see. There's a question review. It will give you a list of all of the questions that you've been presented with. You can see whether you have or have not answered them. You can mark them for review if you choose to do so. You can see a little bit of information about the question itself, as well as the category from which it came. And if you have a particular question that you want to revisit, you can select it and then click the jump to selected question button and you'll be taken right back to that question in the exam. And then finally after that, you can end the exam and look at your score report and get a breakdown of how you did. Once again, with all the questions listed, whether you answered them or not, whether you scored them incorrectly or not, and so on. So that about does it for our video demonstration of our BOSUN XM Max practice exam for Cisco 300-135. I hope this has helped you to see some of the features of our BOSUN XM Max exam simulation products and how they can help you as you work toward your preparation for your next certification exam. If you have any questions about this or any other BOSUN product, please leave us a question down in the comments. And while you're down there, subscribe to our channel so that you can keep up with new content as it's published. Thank you again for spending a few minutes with us to learn about our products. And be sure and check us out on the web at BOSUN.com.